So Lord Jesus, I just want to thank you for this time we can just come together and just be good stewards over our finances, our time, and just souls for the kingdom. Let this um, be just edifying and also wherever we speak, we know it's of the Lord because the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us and that the gospel um, goes into all the land. We give you glory, honor, praise, and worship. Um, thank you and bless Yesi uh, for his time here. And um, as he's just pouring out to others, um, let it be um, sown back into him. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. So, hello, welcome to the Blessing Report. Today we have Yesi Boris, right, <laughs> with um, Money Principles. And he's actually going to be teaching us how to be a kingdom investor, but also a business person when it comes to being a man of God and a person of faith. So um, if you could introduce yourself, um, he's from Amsterdam, so he's going to have a different perspective than us Americans. <laughs> uh, so feel free. Thank you, Winston. Thank you for having me. So maybe let's start by introducing myself. Um, I'm Jesse Borst, I'm uh, 32 years old. Um, I'm as a, a professional investor for my career. I, uh, am, I'm a multi-asset investor. So what I do is that I invest for my clients, let's say globally in the stock market, but also in real estate, in commodities, in bonds, corporate bonds, uh, sovereign bonds. Um, and what I also have is a YouTube channel where I teach people about personal finance and uh, about investing. So how can they, they get, can get started with investing? And I'm also a Christian and I believe that God calls us to be a good steward of our finances. And I'm always happy to teach people about finances. How can they make good decisions, wise decisions? And more importantly, how, how can you create a generous, how can you be generous with your money and, how's, and, and be a blessing to others without being, let's say, stuck uh, in, let's say, uh, lack mm -hmm. and that you are able to, to freely give. And for me, I'm always, when I talk to, uh, let's say, a lot of, I have a lot of wealthy clients. Um, and if you see about how they manage their finances, there are also a lot of biblical principles in there and you see that God thinks about resources and how we can reuse those resources for the kingdom um, so I hopefully this conversation can be a blessing to uh, to your audience oh amen um, I just like the perspective of being like a generous giver and even like the Lord says in first Corinthians that we need to be like cheerful givers um, so how have you viewed um, your relationship with the Lord when it comes to money and finances and like the gospel, right? Because um, when it comes to, I guess, like winning souls, right? The big thing is, hey, Jesus was raised from the dead. Um, God is coming back to have like relationship with us. So how does like the gospel fit? Not only like financially, but I guess because you're in more of a traditional, like, so I'm more of like entrepreneurial and you're entering in with like money principles coming into the YouTube space, but you're in the marketplace. So how does like the gospel fit in the marketplace? So first of all, I think that if you look at the kingdom, the currency of the kingdom is people. So it's all about how to empower people, how to bring talents to life, how to create life through the gospel in people's lives. Um, but to do that, you need resources. And there are many resources in the kingdom. And one of them is finances. Um, and I think God calls us to uh, look at the resources that he gives and to make, let's say, good use of it. And, we, and if we make good use of it, we are way more effective in reaching, let's say, the people that God puts on our heart. And I think it's also a testimony to other people on how we as God's people manage our finances. And quite interestingly, if you look at 
let's say the 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 millionaire population mm -hmm. you see that most of them are religious and most of them are christian so there is a clear link between let's say how you how you think about god and what god what role god has in your life and how that impacts your uh, your finances um not only from a let's say blessing point of view mm -hmm. so that god opens doors and gives you a position in the marketplace that you can be, let's say, where you have a positive influence. But it's also about how do you think about money and what, yeah, what beliefs do you have about money that can be, can have a positive impact on your life. Mm -hmm. I like um, your aspect of precision because that was actually why I reached out um, to you because I haven't been very precise when it comes to my own investing. So I wanted to, I guess, get your perspective on practical investing, but also, I guess, almost like spiritual, supernatural investing. Um, if we look at Daniel or Joseph, people encountering the Holy Spirit through dreams um, and so on and so forth versus just, hey, this is um, fundamental analysis. It's just technical analysis. This is how to invest. Um, so are you more on like the natural and practical side of investing or more of the supernatural wisdom side? That's a very good question. And I think that the answer is somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. um, because if you if you read about if you read let's say the scripture why do we read the bible it's also to get the knowledge mm -hmm. to understand how god speaks to us but also uh, there are so many uh, yeah, principles that god has given us that we can use and that we can learn about and that we can can use so it's not only about let's say uh, let's say the 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 revelation that God gives us uh, through the Holy Spirit, but it's also the wisdom that He imparted us through generations and through the Bible that we can uh, that we can use. So, if I think about investing, it's for me. It started, let's say, when I let's say first encountered investing was in my studies. So, mm -hmm. I've have a I have an educational background. I have a master's in finance. I have a CFA designation, and so I have, let's say, the formal education from a, from an investor. Um, but I have also, let's say, a relationship with the Lord, and that helps me to put all the pieces together, so to say. And when it comes, for instance, about uh, I can learn a lot from, let's say, my colleagues about which investments to pick, and what are the best investments at this point in time. Um, and I also see that God put, puts me in the right direction. Okay, maybe you should talk to this and this person. Uh, and sometimes the ideas I get from, from the Lord himself that, hey, maybe we sh you should invest in this. And then I pitch this to my, uh, to my uh, <laughs> investor colleagues. And then one thing led to another. We are in a very profitable investment. So I think it goes hand in hand. If we only mm -hmm. fo follow our, let's say, the, 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 a good feeling or the revelation, there is the trap that you make stupid decisions once yes. in a while. <laughs> and, the problem, and the problem with a stupid decision is it can, get, it can cost you a lot, especially on your wealth building journey. That, um, so the, the thing is you need to create a system that can 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 help you to make let's say good decisions rational decisions but also gives you the the room to listen to the lord and act upon that so it's not just i do this and then <laughs> the lord has to deal with it mm -hmm. no it's about let's say having a heart that allows the lord to be able to maneuver and to guide you in the in a sense but for me, it's always with it's always word and spirit, mm. um, meaning also knowledge, principles, wisdom, and revelation. So, for me, it's always about uh, having a balanced a balanced approach. And I also learned 
let's say, if I, if I look back on how the Lord has spoken to me, it was almost never with, let's say, lightning and thunder. Mm -hmm. It was always, let's say, building on something that I was already working on. Um, and if I think about investing, for me, investing is about planting seeds. And these seeds can grow over time into trees. So it's not a one, let's say, one idea, one, let's say, good thing that, let's say, makes you rich or makes you wealthy or whatever. It's not one thing. It's a journey. It's a process. Um, and you need to have some rules in place and a system in place that can help you with that. And, with and the same goes with anything else, like marriage. Mm -hmm. It's not a, a one-day thing. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a journey. And would you have any recommendations for systems or rules that um, helped you out in life? Or you're just like, I really like these for us? Yeah, so the first... Um, Let's say the first thing that I, uh, that I uh, think that people need to uh, understand, there are like two things that you don't want to do. Let me start with that. Um, there are two extremes, so to say. People who don't invest and people who go all in on investing. Um, the people who don't invest, I would encourage you to start investing and to start small, start with something that, that you understand, maybe invest in a, in a business that you, that you have, or maybe in a, invest in a friend's business or invest in the stock market, uh, because maybe you understand, okay, businesses make profits. These profits will be shared with their shareholders via dividends or via capital appreciation. And that sort of, in that way, I can benefit from the growth of these companies. So make it very simple and understandable for yourself. Or if you understand, let's say, what, uh, what your friend is doing, a business that he has, and you can participate in that, find a way to participate. If you don't participate, is if you don't invest your money, the reality is it will be very difficult to reach long-term financial goals. For instance, going, on re going to retire or saving for your kid's college tuition, um, or building wealth in general. Because why is investing so powerful? Is you use something called compound interest. And compound is interest is exponential growth of your money. And for example, if you would invest $150 each month from the age 18 to the age 68, that's 50 years, if you do that, and you would do that in the stock market and you get a return of 8%, you already have over a million dollars. So just by consistently participating in something that grows over time, you will have, let's say, a very large result from a small seed. And the small seed is in this case $150. But if you do that consistently and you gave it time, the seed will grow into a tree and will bear fruit. And I think that's something that, you, that, we, that people need to understand. It's about giving it the time, watering it, giving it the, the, the seed, and then it will grow over time. The, the other part is people who understand a bit of investing that go all in. <laughs> they hear, heard about, let's say, a nice investment from their friend who recently started day trading or had a fancy cryptocurrency. Uh, cryptocurrency invest in, investment, they go all in on that investment. Then the investment goes, either it's brilliant and they earn a lot of money mm -hmm. or they lose a lot of money, but both are not good for you. Yeah. So if you lose your money, you get scared about investing and you're, you move to the first group who, who doesn't invest. And in the second, uh, second, you get rich, you think, okay, hey, I made a very good decision. And then um, you try it again and you try it again and you try it again. And at, at one point, you probably 
will uh, will lose will lose again because the the reality is is that because you risk it all, you can also lose it all. And even if you win three times and you lose the fourth time, the the end result is still the same. You don't have anything mm-hmm. by the end. So I would also not encourage you to uh, yeah to uh, to go all in on your investments. Always think about okay, how can I reach a financial goal? by investing long term by taking by investing every month a little bit so that you so that you can let it grow for the you, that you can let it grow and not that you have to do it now and that you have the the mindset of i want to get rich quick because that's necessarily not a good thing um, so you're managing millions of dollars right and I'm assuming that your position is pretty well off. How do you not fall into, I guess, covetousness or greed or any of the youthful lusts that the Bible tells us to stay away from? I th- I think that's a th- that's a very good question, and and that's not only for a person in my position. I indeed manage billions, um, billions. and Sorry. it's <laughs> it's a. Uh, of course, let's say if you have, let's say, a, um, a large sum of money, it's you think, okay, it's all about the money, it's all about the money. But the reality is, if you are managing billions, it's a very big responsibility. Um, so you always, uh, and the only way you are allowed to manage that kind of money is that you that you are able to, let's say, uh, manage that kind of money. So in my view, I don't. Um, for me, the, I, I, I don't really care much about the money itself. Mm. I care more about, let's say, the people behind the money um, and uh, the, the, the families. And of course, billions are not generally not from one person, but there are pension funds, banks all behind that that have um, that manage the money for their uh, their clients. And that gives me also the the yeah the understanding, and I feel that pressure, of course, that I want also to to do well for them. Um, and greed is something that um, is a byproduct of not being generous. I think if you if if let me let me give you an example. There are four things that you can do with money. You can spend it. You can save it, you can invest it, and you can give it away. And these four functions, uh, these four things that you can do with money have a very different purpose. Um, Spending you do for here and now to enjoy yourself, but also to pay the bills. You save for short-term financial goals. Maybe you want to go on a vacation and you save for that. You might want to have a buffer in case something happens. Uh, you invest for the long term. You invest to build wealth, to save for your college, for kids' college tuition, uh, or for retirement. And you give your money not only because you want to help others, but it also helps you to separate from your money, and mm. it helps you to keep to you know, to keep control over your money. There's this famous saying: is that uh, Money is a good slave, but a horrible master. Mm-hmm. And I, that, that's so true, is that if you, take, it, if you get, take giving out of the equation and you only, let's say, save and invest for yourself, and it becomes a greedy thing. You save and invest for yourself, and you spend it on yourself. It's all about you, you, you. But the moment you put giving into the equation, it gives a different dimension. It focuses not on you, no, it focuses on other people and it helps you to separate from your money. So for me, generosity is a key tool to, yeah, to stay away from the trap uh, of greed. Um, and the next thing is, is that one thing that I've also learned and that's, um, of course, in the investment world, it's all about money and also you see that uh, if you look at uh, in history, there have many been, let's say, investors. They always chased more and more and more. And what you, if you learn from, let's say, the from that history, 
is that that, 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 that doesn't always end well. So uh, maybe a very good example, uh, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's one of, it's, 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 a, I, I, I love the story, but it has a, it has a bit of a, a nasty flavor to it, but <laughs> I think it's a good one. Um, one of my, let's say, uh, also, he was also called Jesse, but Jesse Livermore, he lived in 1877 and he was a, he became famous as a legendary trader. Before the age of 30, he already made a hundred million dollars. He was very good at his profession. He became famous with going short the stock market. So betting against the stock market. So if it goes down, he would earn a lot of money. He also became famous for technical analysis. And he was very good at his job. At one point, on a certain day in 1929, when there was, there was a, what we call Black Monday, is one of the most famous days in history in the stock market. The market went down and many people lost their money. Why? Because they, lose, they use debt to invest. So one thing that everybody should don't use debt to invest. It's um, generally a bad recipe, especially if you use debt not to buy real estate, but you buy it for, for stocks. It's generally a bad recipe, but many people lost their, lost their money. And on that day, uh, Jesse came home from work and he went to his family and his fa family was very worried. What, what happened to Jesse? Did he, is he going well? Did he lost everything? Everybody was worried. And Jesse came home and he was like, why is everybody worried? And um, he told his family that he made over a billion dollars that trading day. So he did something that men, most, many investors would only dream about. He bet against the stock market. So he bet, he went short the stock market in one of the worst days of the stock market. And he, he became very rich and rich beyond any, anything imaginable in that time. Um, and what happened was that, um, after a, few, after a few years, he, uh, he lost it all and eventually committed suicide. Mm. So what, what happened with Jesse, he was very successful financially, but he wanted to have more mm. and eventually risk it all, bet bigger and eventually lost even his life. So the clue of this story is, is, is that you need to define also when you have enough mm -hmm. and knowing when you have enough. And I think it's much easier to answer that question. If you have the Lord on your side is that it's not about the money. It's about what you can do with the money and how you can be a blessing to others. So for me, wealth is having enough to help others. And I think that's something that's, that's, that's very um, sometimes difficult to, to understand. And especially if, you're, if you see things moving in your direction, things are going well, you think, oh, everything, will, uh, everything that I will touch will turn into gold. <laughs> um, but the reality is, is that money can become an idol mm -hmm. and you need to be aware of that. And giving is a, is a perfect way to, uh, to do that. Wow. That is powerful. That is such a, it's a sobering story, but it's a really good one too. Um, it reminds me, I was reading Luke 16, um, this morning and it's the chapter on Lazarus and Abraham. Um, no. I remember, so Lazarus went to heaven and then the rich man went to hell. I, and so he was received in Abraham's bosom. And in it, um, he says like, hey, can I just go back and tell my brothers and my family about hell? And they said, um, they wouldn't hear the prophets. They're not gonna hear you either. So that chapter um, really juxtaposes wealth pretty interestingly because it begins with the like unjust steward or like the slothful steward over money. So his, um, 
his lord came back and he was like, I heard you've been a lazy steward. Um, you're going to lose your position. And it said that he repented and he went to everyone who owed his lord money. And he started getting the debts. And then he called him a wise steward. So you start off of, hey, uh, whatever you do in the least of these, um, you're going to do um, more when you get like more responsibility. But then it transitions from being wealthy to like the pitfalls of wealth. Not the Lord wants us to be prosperous and fruitful. The love of money is the root of all evil, not money itself. <laughs> but it shows that, hey, like you said, if you're going to be wealthy, you need to be generous, just like Lazarus being poor and this rich man not helping him at all. And then Lazarus going to heaven and then the rich man going to hell. Indeed. Yeah, I think that's a very, uh, it's a very interesting story. There's so many elements in there. And maybe one of the well-quoted verses in the Bible is that it's very difficult that it's more difficult for a rich man to go to heaven than go through the eye of the needle. Um, but I think that the, if you if you look at that first and you drill down a bit and the eye of the needle is the small, let's say, a gate uh, in the, the city wall um, where the camels would, uh, would, if they wanted to go through that small gate, they needed to get on their knees and I think that's that, wow. that's the key. <laughs> if you if a rich man wants to go to heaven, he needs to get on his knees, and that's that's something that um, people need to realize. It's that wealth is not something that that say puts you in a higher position, but it you put it should be uh, as a service to others. So it should be on your knees for the Lord but well, also on your knees for others because it's a big responsibility and you need to take that seriously. It's not about just the, 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 fun, the fun things. Everybody wants to be rich, but nobody wants the responsibility that comes with it. So I think it's, um, for me, it, it, it helps that um, if, you, if you look through the Bible and you look how, for instance, Daniel, Joseph, Abraham, they were all wealthy people, by the way, how they, let's say, used their possessions in service to the kingdom. And if we can have that mindset on what we can do with our money and how that can help the kingdom grow, I think that can, can be such a revelation and can be such a powerful thing that we can, um, that we can use for the, for the good. Yeah. Wow. That was great. Um, I do want to pick up on your um, analogy of the knees um, and bowing down because um, you come from a different cultural background than us. So the Bible is originally in Hebrew and Aramaic. It gets translated to Greek and then to English, right? So Americans will read the Bible and it's kind of very unwise and a little arrogant, um, strictly in English. So they think it's a literal needle in which you, that you sew. But I went to a church where they taught it's the smaller door in the gate, right? And so in a leadership program, they were teaching on how people read the Bible differently um, by their cultural context. So one good story um, that they used as an example was um, the prodigal son story of why did he befall issues? So there's three different elements um, in the story where he bef um, befell issues. It says that, well, Amer um, from the, the class I took, they said Americans will say he wasted his money because he was young and youthful with all his lust. But in the second part, before he comes to the end of himself, it says that the land befell famine. So they said when Russian Christians read that story, they said the issues came from the famine coming. And then they were just saying how it's so different. So do you encounter that um, since you are um, European that you have different perspective when it comes to the gospel? It's difficult to assess for me whether I have a yeah. different perspective. But um, 
what I what I can say is that um, if you look at the back of the history of let's say uh, of the, let's say the, the Netherlands and uh, and Dutch people is that they have very have a trade mindset. They always think about trade and. At one point in time, the Netherlands was the richest country in the world. And we still, let's say, have this, this trade mindset. So one of my favorite verses in the Bible mm-hmm. is, uh, is the, the parable of the talents in Matthew. And that God says, okay, there's this, everybody has a certain amount that we need to steward. And how you do, what you do with it, um, determines on how God will reward that. Will He give you more? And in talents, talents is let's say trans is a yeah. In that time, was just a bag of money. Um, so if I if I see what people did with the with the money in the in the in the parable, was one put it in the ground, um, one started doing business with it, and you see that you see that that doing business with it, putting it to use. And I think that uh, for me that that yeah that that is so is valuable is because I think it's so important to always keep progressing, always keep moving, always keep growing, always making sure that things uh, are things are moving are moving forward. And I think that's something that's also part of my yeah, let's say my culture, it's always more about doing instead of dreaming <laughs> <laughs> that you that you want to achieve something. It's more about doing it. Um, and that's also that also goes with uh, yeah with, with with money is what what are you doing with it? Are you putting it to work? Um, are you investing it in yourself, in your family, in your um in in the stock market, are you buying businesses? What are you doing with it? And I also see that God has that mindset. What are you doing? Are you growing? Are you growing in your relationships? Are you growing in your relationship with Him? Are you growing your wealth? And are you becoming more generous? And it's always that question: how are you moving and are you moving in line with the Spirit? Are you are you moving? Um, are you? I always say that I give hundred percent, and God makes it a thousand percent. Is that I do my best, mm-hmm. and that's that's what God asks from us: is that we do our best. But God makes it so much more than what we can what we can do by ourselves. Um, and that that's also goes with uh, yeah with, with with investing. Is that you do something, you plant a seed, and eventually it's something much bigger than you would Im- would imagine beforehand. So that's very, um, very good. Oh, yeah. I love that um, seed analogy because the New Testament says, wherever you sow, you shall reap. So if you sow um, spiritual, you'll reap spiritual. But if you sow carnality or in short, like bad stuff, it'll come um, back to you. So do you have any, I guess, advice on um, essentially like everything doesn't go well, right? So if like um, restoration, like fixing loss, like you made a bad investment or you had some type of error, how do you recover um, naturally or as a believer, um, any perspective on that? Yeah, I think that the, the the first step is that you you need to be humble and, and say, okay, I made some mistakes, and th- that's part of life. I'm not going to punish myself for it. I want to learn from it, and more importantly, I get back on my feet. So, and getting back on your feet, I think that uh, especially when it comes to investing, okay, you made a mistake, you lost you lost some money. Um, don't hit yourself on the same rock twice, but okay, maybe there's a different way that I can invest, that I can grow wealth, and maybe a way that doesn't give me as much headache (laughs) as it did before. So the first thing when it comes to investing, the easiest way to start investing is just invest in the stock market. It's 
let's say the the easiest accessible thing is just buy something like an S&P 500 ETF that gives you a, a 500 of the biggest companies in the US that have a global nature uh, already. And that if these companies grow, then you automatically participate in that. So it's a very, let's say, there's a low threshold. You participate. And if you look at the stock market, uh, if you look at it from a, from a historic perspective, let's say you can get a, a return about 8%. And that's already enough if you use it consistently over time to build a lot of wealth. So from a wealth perspective, you don't need to get much fancier than that. Just invest in the stock market. And the good thing about the stock market is, is that even if the stock market goes down, it's very difficult for all these companies to go bankrupt at the same time. Mm. So losing your money, losing everything is Um, it's almost impossible, something that we've never seen before. And uh, so the only thing that you need to uh, be aware of is this, if the stock market goes down, then it's on sale. So you can buy more of it against a cheaper price. Because generally what we see is that if stock markets goes down, that it also goes up again. Um, and we saw that with COVID, that the stock market went down 30%. And it took about two months to be back at a new high. So we also need to be, be mindful is that we should not be led by fear, but by, by hope and by opportunity and see that uh, the markets are driven by fear and that many people panic, and many people start selling. The only thing that, that you need to do is start build, continue to build wealth. Because effectively what you do is by investing in the stock market, you, you, you bet on, let's say, also God's plans for this, uh, for this world. And I think that, that eventually Jesus comes back for a bride. And that's not only, let's say, the people, but it's, it's everything. Mm -hmm. It's also the, yeah, the, 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 the products and services and countries and everything that we everything god will inherit jesus will inherit eventually so i think we also can um, can have a more let's say optimistic view on the on the world and of course there will be uh, trials and tribulations along the way uh, but eventually jesus will come back and by being an owner an owner of companies you will also develop an ownership mindset And that's about responsibility, about stewardship, about, okay, these companies that I invest in, how are they treating the world? And do I want to have a, uh, do I have, do I have a, an, a, an opinion about that? And one thing that I always, uh, yeah, want to encourage people, uh, there are also ways to, for instance, invest sustainably. And that means that you would not invest in, the, in companies that have ethical um, challenges, So to say, uh, you can think about uh, tobacco, adult entertainment, that stuff, that the investment industry already recognized that we, we don't want to invest in that. And they give that opportunity also to, uh, yeah, to their investors. So there are also ways to, if you don't just want to buy everything that's out there, you don't want to buy, let's say, an ETF, you can, you, you can also buy an ETF that's sustainable. And that screens out these companies that you don't might want, don't want to invest in from a, let's say, moral point of view. So there are many ways that you can incorporate your beliefs into your investing. Um, and I also think that, uh, especially if you start investing, you, know, you will also see more opportunities. And I personally try to keep my investments as simple as possible. Also, because I think that The more complex you make it, the more time you need to spend on it. But the return you get on the time that you spend on it, it's not always as beneficial. So let's say you invest $10,000 and you get a 10% return if you invest passively in the stock market. Uh, the alternative is you do it actively. You, you are, let's say, as good as a legendary investor like Warren Buffett and you get 20%. You might get 
a thousand dollars more. And that sounds a lot, mm. but it's not a lot if you need to spend every week a few hours on it. Yes. Because then effectively it means that you get paid, let's say, a few bucks an hour, which is below the minimum wage. So it's not even, it should not be worth your time. So you need to think about this extra time that I put into it. Is it worth, is it, worth it? Um, and I've, I've come to the conclusion, especially if you're starting, um, it's better to keep it simple, make it scalable so that you can just grow it over time, that you don't lose your money, so that it's very almost impossible, especially if you do it in 500, if you invest in 500 companies and you give it the time. And your focus as an investor should not be trying to be smart and pick the best investments. That's, of course, what I do for a living. Uh, but as a, as, a, as a, let's say, somebody who starts investing, it's, it, it's more about can I, be, can I build the discipline to continue investing and when the market goes down and all your friends say, oh, I want to sell inflation, the world is going to end, that you say, no, I'm going to continue and maybe even invest a bit more because things are on sale, that I continue to do that. And that you also have to focus that, okay, even if the, the world, if let's say Jesus comes back, he still comes back to a world of people with products and services and that he will, he will rule that world and that it will, that you have, let's say, an optimistic view on what the future is. I like the way that you um, outlined that because it goes right in line with Colossians. It said that everything was scattered abroad because of the fall of man, right? But everything was gathered back together through the man Christ Jesus, being like the first begotten of like a new kind and a new creation. So all the wisdom you've been giving has really been helping me because uh, I told you about my woes. But um, the knowledge that you're giving is on your YouTube channel, Money Principles. So could you give the audience like an overview of what to expect and also how to find you online? Sure. Yeah, so everybody who has questions, you can reach you can reach uh, reach to me on uh, on LinkedIn, but also on uh, on my on my YouTube channel, Money Principles. Um, on my my channel, my focus is to give timeless principles about money and investing. So, not focusing on what's the best thing that you can do today, but more about what is the wisdom over the last generations that's been gathered about this subject, um, and teach them. And I try to keep it, let's say, in short videos, videos of five minutes or less, uh, keep it short and focused on a subject. As of January, I will be posting twice a week. So keep following that. There's also an e-course, a small e-course with uh, 11 episodes where I yeah, put some principles together that help you on your journey. I will teach about the four functions of money, uh, but also about steps you can take with regards to investing, what different types of investments are there. Um, also give a bit of a framework about uh, what's out there, uh, but also about, for instance, considerations with your spending. So everybody knows you need to have a budget, but how do you do that? And maybe some, some simple tips and tricks that can help. And I'll also teach about living is giving that it's all about how can you be a blessing to others um, and also try to involve some, um, some science in there. There's many research about uh, generosity. We call it the science of generosity. And that's all about, and that's founded by a Christian billionaire from who, who lived, uh, who already passed away, it was founded by a Christian billionaire and he's, um, such an example, and he had a, had a phrase that the, the secret to wealth is gratitude. And I think that yeah, he, let's say, promotes a research in this field um, that you see that if you are generous, um, it has a positive effect on your relationships, it has a positive effect on your, your work environment, it has a positive effect for your finances, it, finances 
but also positive effect for your health. There are so many things that are in there that uh, I teach about and that I can help people with. And hopefully I can, uh, can help uh, many more who uh, start listening to my channel. And also encourage everybody to subscribe, of course, uh, and like my videos uh, to help the algorithm. But <laughs> I think that uh, that's, that, that's, uh, that's expected, of course. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have all the information below with the e-course, how to subscribe, and also the money game in our description box below. And actually, I just want to thank you uh, for your time. This has been a great wealth of knowledge and help. Thank you, Winston, for having me. Uh, it's been a pleasure.